Hi everyone, welcome to week two of our Family Homelessness Information Series. My name is Kara Lair. I'm the Communication Specialist here at In From The Cold, and I'm here again with our Executive Director, Abe Brown. This week, we're going to be focusing on research and data in the homeless serving sector and the gaps we see on research around family homelessness. We will be talking with different experts in the sector, Kevin McNichol from the Calgary Homeless Foundation, Dr. Katrina Mullaney from the University of Calgary, and of course, Abe Brown. So Abe, before we get going into the questions, why don't you explain a little bit about your background in the homeless serving sector and the experience you have with data management and research? Uh, prior to joining in from the cold, I was the uh, director of programs at the Calgary Drop-In Center for about six years. And, and you know, the, the DI is a great organization that uh, serves actually in its shelter more people than any shelter of its kind actually in North America. So, you know, it was a really uh, incredible opportunity to, at a, at a high level, understand, you know, what was happening with data and, and designing programs, offering solutions for folks who are vulnerable is very difficult if you don't understand what exactly is going on. While I was at the DI, I was also uh, privileged to be uh, the chair of a group called the Calgary Recovery Services Task Force, which was a collaboration of 26 different agencies in Calgary that was, was focused on health, uh, the health care outcomes for uh, homeless Calgarians who had been homeless for a long time. And as that group began to uh, unfold, one of the critical elements was, uh, what is the data telling us? Mm -hmm. And frankly, we didn't have any data. And so it was, it was tough to, you know, sort of create health interventions for vulnerable people if you don't actually have a, a data-driven uh, uh, analysis of what exactly is going on. Great answer. Can you explain the role that research and data plays at In From The Cold? In From The Cold is the only 24-7 uh, street-level emergency shelter for families in Alberta. But to our knowledge, we're also the largest family shelter in, in Canada. And so that gives us a unique uh, opportunity to look at the, the data uh, of homelessness, but through the lens of, of, of a family. And a family who experiences homelessness, as we talked about uh, in our last session, has a level of complexity that is profoundly uh, greater, in, in my view, as compared to, say, a, a single who's homeless. And so here at In From The Cold, we, we have to uh, focus on more than just the provision of basic shelter because of the presence of children. Mm -hmm. you know? So in a typical homeless shelter, you can, you can kind of get away with a mat and a meal, <laughs> we used to call it three hots and a cot, you know, in, in the singles sector. Uh, but uh, in, in, at In From the Cold, you know, we have to have early childhood development programs, for example, because of the fact that the, the brain development of these children is in such a critical stage and uh, the impact of trauma, uh, you know, obviously health and wellness for not only children, but, but pregnant and nursing moms. Uh, is, is a huge part of what we do here at In From The Cold and ensuring that we're looking at the family unit not just through the lens of, oh, you're homeless, but we're looking at downstream. How's the child developing? What are the health and wellness uh, outcomes that we're aiming for? And so how do we build programs today that can support those outcomes? So it's, it's a really important thing. And uh, frankly, in our view, it's one of the more under-researched part of homelessness, right? It's mm -hmm. not something, you know, if you go to Google Scholar and start looking around for our research articles on family homelessness, uh, there are some there, absolutely, but not nearly as much as sort of the typical homeless population. So we think, uh, you know, In From the Cold is in a unique opportunity uh, to, it has a unique opportunity to present uh, a look at the data that can uh, paint a picture and give us the information we need. Mm -hmm. How does including that research or different data management propel our work forward? Data really drives uh, response to a problem. And I think for us, when we look at the problems of poverty and the complexity of family homelessness, without data, it's very difficult to know exactly what to do. And frankly, part of that data is talking to the people that we serve themselves. And so donors are constantly asking us questions about outcomes. You know, as a result of all of the stuff that you do at In From The Cold, are you able to point to positive outcomes? 
in the lives of the families that you're serving? And so I'm pretty happy to say that the answer to that is yes, uh, but, but that has to be based on data and measurement rather than just sort of touchy-feely, oh, we think this is what's happening. What data management systems do we currently use? I mean, number one, we use a, a tool called HMIS, which is the Homeless Management Information System, which is a sector-wide tool. So all across uh, Calgary, all of the homeless serving agencies who uh, receive funding from the Calgary Homeless Foundation use this tool. Uh, it's a very effective uh, tool that helps us essentially to case manage our families from the point of entry at the front door of our shelter right through into housing and then allows us to track their progress. And so, you know, back to this idea of outcomes, HMIS is, is very effective for that. Uh, and then, of course, we've also developed several tools that we use here, uh, one of which, for example, is called the Family Outcomes Star. And so the Family Outcomes Star is a great tool that measures things like progress to work, uh, financial management, life skills, uh, how is conflict resolution in the family going, early childhood development. Uh, of course, our health and wellness team uh, also has uh, tools that they use, uh, uh, you know, medical assessment tools to, to sort of track progress, either of a parent or a child. And then within our uh, early childhood development program, we use uh, ASQ assessments, so ages and stages. And so what we want to be able to do is, is see how the children are developing and then work with the parents. So we have a, a quite a range of, of I guess, data uh, gathering uh, processes here at Infamical. Mm -hmm. Can you give a brief overview of the data management system overhaul that is going on? A lot of our uh, management team at In From the Cold had, had begun a process of looking at uh, essentially how we were capturing data, what kind of data we were capturing, and then how we could track the progress of families through the system of care and through In From the Cold. And uh, the, the idea has been to essentially develop, uh, and it doesn't have to be our own software tool, if we can find a software tool that uh, would do the work, then absolutely we'll use it. But essentially an in-house tool that can pull together all of these different data management systems. So uh, in the last question, uh, when you asked about some of the different data uh, that we, we capture right now, uh, of course, uh, it's working okay, but literally we have about six or seven different software applications that we use to capture this data. And so it makes it much more difficult to tell the story of the outcomes. And so we've been looking at how can we pull all of this together and, and also make sure that all of our data is, is much more outcome focused. I'm, I'm so excited about this because this uh, data management system that we're building right now would actually benefit a lot more than just us. Okay. Do you see gaps in data and research surrounding family homelessness? So singles homelessness is still uh, well over the majority of homelessness. And so, of course, uh, most of the research dollars have gone in that direction because we need to kind of understand the bigger problem, I guess you could say, if we're measuring it just by quantity. But I think for In From the Cold, you know, our, our only sort of concern with that is in family homelessness, you're not only dealing with the first generation outcomes or impacts. You know, in other words, the homeless person themselves. In family homelessness, you're dealing with this downstream impact, which all of us as society are going to have to pay for. Uh, and that's that a homeless child if, if the intervention doesn't do its job, uh, will almost universally become a homeless adult. And then, again, uh, there's all these downstream costs that are associated with that. So we, we think that uh, family homelessness has not been researched as well. But good news is uh, we're working to change that and, uh, of course, uh, add to the, the picture of data when it comes to family homelessness. But what, what can we do to, to sort of address this issue of a data gap? in family homelessness. And I'm happy to say uh, we don't want to uh, just complain about it, about this lack of data. We're, we're actually a huge part of the solution. And, uh, you know, not only are we overhauling our own data management capture system so that we can add, but we've also um, had some donors, some donors step forward and, and they're willing to help fund some research uh, into family homelessness. And so we have been working uh, very closely with Dr. Katrina Mullaney, she is 
uh, a professor at the Cummings School of Medicine here at the University of Calgary. Uh, she is probably the Canadian expert when it comes to uh, data and research on family homelessness. She particularly has an interest, a long-standing interest in vulnerable women and, of course, children. So we're partnering with Katrina on two research projects, and, and, and one is around sort of indigenous uh, mothers and families who are experiencing homelessness, and then the other is around uh, particularly newcomer women uh, who are also mothers, and, and of course their children, and, and some of the unique issues that they experience. And um, indigenous families and newcomer families make up about 80% of the families we see heard in from the cold. So uh, that is going to be profoundly valuable information to us. How can someone watching get more involved in this? How can they help contribute to research and move this forward? I, I imagine if you're watching a video like this, that you, you probably have a passion for these types of, of things. If you're a researcher, uh, if you have expertise, if you're a research assistant, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, you know, to us. And of course, I know it's easy to reach us. You can see our social media channels and contact info. Uh, you know, and, and if you have expertise, we sure would love to, to hear about that because we are super open to uh, collaborating as much as we can. Obviously, financially, uh, you know, we sure would love for, you know, foundations or individuals uh, or even corporate Calgary to support us, uh, not just in taking care of homeless families here and from the cold, but also uh, funding some of the research. And so maybe you're watching and you're thinking, yeah, that, that, that's pretty interesting. I'd like to get involved. Well, you know, give us a call and we'd love to work with you maybe on a research project and a design of one. And and so those are some ways to, to consider. And I, and I also think one thing we, we want to always say to, you know, just to citizens is, is get involved. Engage politicians of, of every political stripe. Um, make your voice heard, you know, around issues like homelessness in general, uh, but particularly family homelessness. I mean, tell your representatives at the, the city level, uh, at the provincial level, even at the federal level that uh, you think more can be done. And uh, obviously have a conversation with your political representatives because that's your right. Well, thanks, Abe. That is all for today. Uh, we'll be back next week discussing trauma-informed <clears throat> care with our Director of Programs, Amanda St. Laurent. So thanks, Abe. Thank you, and uh, much appreciated.